Hey guys, it's AJ from Design the Everything. Today I will be answering a follow-up question from a viewer. About a week ago, a viewer asked me how to do these curved slots in a plate. So now he wants to modify these a little bit and put them together, or put this together in an assembly with another piece. So we're gonna start off. I made this too thick because I wasn't really thinking about using it as a mechanical part last time. So I'm gonna go ahead and come down here to my timeline and just double click on the uh, first extrude. And I'm gonna make that half in. I'll do a quarter inch. There we go. So that's all you have to do to change something. Double click on it on the timeline, change it. And hopefully it will update the thing that you wanted to change. Sometimes it'll break connections, uh, especially things like fillets are very easily broken when you go back and do an edit there. So just keep that in mind. If something is broken, it'll highlight it in yellow. And you either need to just delete that, uh, the broken part here and redo it or see if you can fix it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a hole in the center of this. To do that, I'm just going to hit create and find the hole button. The hotkey is H. And then you can either do a point on a sketch or there's actually a, a pre-existing point here at the center. I'm gonna click on that. And then <clears throat> we're gonna change this to be um, you know, a reasonable hole. I think it's supposed to be 12 millimeters what he's doing, but uh, I'm just gonna call it a quarter inch. So diameter 0.25. and it's cutting through there it's a simple hole cool so i'm just gonna hit okay and now i have a hole in the middle i'm gonna save this one under a different name so i'm gonna call this slots mounting plate and now that i have the second version of the file i'm gonna edit it a little so i'm gonna come over here and delete these slots and do a new sketch on this plate this sketch I'm going to use to position the holes that I'm about to put in, the mounting holes. So I'm going to do a rectangle from center and put it out here. I'm going to make that a construction element by selecting it all, hitting the construction element. And I forgot where these holes need to be, so I'm going to go back and open up my um, original slotted plate here. All right, so there's the original slot of play. I'm gonna go to this sketch. Should be that sketch. So I'm gonna use this to position this slot here. I didn't really think through this position when I first made it because I was just demonstrating and I wasn't doing a uh, actual design. So to figure out where that is, I'm just gonna make another rectangle on here and just kind of go until it's about in the center. Now I'm holding down control because you see how this is trying to stick to things. If you hold down control, it's not going to stick to things. And I'm just going to eyeball this center. When you do it, you'll probably actually want to do this back place plate first and then do the slotted plate with those dimensions. But that is 3.02. Let's just call that three inches. Uh, and this should be a 2.75. All right, so that's supposed to be 2.75 inches more or less and three inches. So I'm just going to undo out of all of that 2.75 by three, I can remember that, and go back over here and now set the dimension on this. So I hit D for dimension. This was 2.75 and then this dimension, D for dimension, that was three. Now these corners are the center point of our arcs. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a point. You have to actually expressly add a point to each one of these corners. Hit stop sketch. And now you can go back and um, create hole. Now you can go back and hit create hole or you can use the hotkey H. Click on all of those points and now you have uh, the holes going through. And I believe you wanted these threaded, so you can go to Create Thread. Click on the inside surfaces here, and it'll auto-populate what it thinks, the, what thread you're looking for. So in this case, I did a quarter inch hole, and a quarter 20 is a very common 
um, threading standard, so it's going to automatically choose that one. Uh, but you can override it and do whatever you want. I'm hit remember size, so that way every time you uh, click on one, that will. Uh, if you hit remember size every time you click on a new hole, you won't have to re put in all that information. So here's our back plate. It's just got the four holes and the center hole. So <clears throat> now we need to assemble on the first plate here, the one of the, the slots. To do that, the easiest way I've found is open back up um, this panel here by clicking the button with the, the nine squares on it. We can just drag in this other plate and it'll show up. Right now it's overlapping, so we just need to drag it, hit OK. And we need our fasteners. So we're gonna insert some fasteners from McMaster Car. We're gonna go to Insert, McMaster Car Component, and we want a uh, a quarter twenty. Uh, let's do a socket head cap screw. Uh, that should work. And we want uh, let's call it an inch. That'll be more than long enough. So hit product details, and then find the step file down here and hit save. And when you do that, Fusion 360 will load it in. And again, you can rotate it and put it wherever you want. So there's that. Um, all right, so there's that saga head cap screw. Now we need to actually start assembling everything. So if you come up here to the assemble, you can see all of these joints. Now, I am really not a fan of Fusion 360's uh, assembling uh, tools. They've kind of tried to simplify it, and in the process of simplifying it, they don't work very well. I am... Um, I much prefer the inventor assembling controls, which is what I'm familiar with, but we can make these work. So the hot key to make a joint is J, which I'll use throughout this, but this is also the button right here. So click that. And if you get this warning right here, it's just saying that you've moved something, which means it's thinking you might have broken a previous joint, which we haven't. So just say capture position or continue. It doesn't really matter. Either way, it'll be fine. And then we get to select both of our components and figure out how they're going to be connected. So with in this case, we could use the uh, socket head cap screws as our reference pieces for the corners, but it'll be much easier to join these center to center. It's just going to give you less uh, issues later. So it's already selected something, so I'm going to close out of that. And so I'm going to click on select. And let's do the center of that hole. There we go. And to the center of this hole. And we want to change that to be a revolving thing. So now, as you can see, it can rotate. And if we hit animate, it'll show you how it rotates. Now, on other CAD programs, you'll have to specify that like these need to be under face-to-face -face contact. Uh, Inventor actually assumes that, so you don't need to put that in separately and stop, this, stop making that spin. Um, but if you need an offset, you can offset it like this. So for example, if you had a, a washer in there or like a thrust bearing, uh, you could you know offset it and then put in your thrust bearing. But I'm just gonna leave it zero so they're nice and flush and hit okay. So now let's deal with this, uh, this, these screws here. So I need to start off by copying the socket head cap screw. To do that, come over here to your uh, tree, right click and hit copy, and then right click on your tree again and hit paste. Now you have a second one that you can move around to wherever, and you can do that as many times as you need. So I'm gonna go ahead and make four of those. So whenever you are assembling more than two components, they can start acting in unpredictable ways unless you ground one of them. Ground just means it's locked in place and it won't move. If everything move, can move in space, then it's like you're assembling something in mid-air as far as the computer's concerned. So pieces can just kind of fly away and they might not end up in your, your center of mass. When you're going to rotate around, it might rotate around a weird point and it just can cause confusion later. So to negate that, Come over here to your tree and find one of your uh, bodies. It's normally the one 
that would not move in reality, if that makes sense. So like the one that's attached to the CNC machine, for example, which I'm just assuming is this one. And I'm gonna right click on that and hit grounded. So it's at the top, ground. So that is not moving anywhere. All right, so now we can put in these screws. So to put these in place, I'm gonna hit J for joint. I'm gonna click, come down here to the bottom. Um, first, I'm gonna change the type to a cylindrical. And I'm gonna click in the center point of this bottom circle. You'll notice there's a little X there. That means that that, that is an axis. So when I click here, I've selected that center axis. Now I'm gonna to come to my screw hole and there's, you see a matching X. I'm gonna click on that and that'll move that inside there. And it's showing you that it can still move up and down, which we're about to fix that. So I'm gonna hit stop and okay. So now I'm gonna hit J for joint and I'm gonna come over here and on the bottom of this flat surface here, I'm gonna select one of these points. So I'm going to select that one right there. And now we need to select a matching one on this surface here. So I'm just gonna choose um, that one. And now that animation there is showing us how it can move. So it, it, it showed us that it can't move up and down, it can just move around on this plane. So when I hit okay, it will stay there and it can still rotate like that because we haven't constrained that, but it can't move up and down or left or right because it's constrained to that hole and to this plane here. Now, when I was doing this design earlier, I missed a little bit with these slots because I just guesstimated. Uh, but if you have actually thought through your design, you'll see that those won't interfere there at all. And at this point, um, all you need to do is go ahead and do these last, these last three. I'm gonna go ahead and do that as a time lapse. But I actually wanna show you one more way you can do these. Now, if you look down here, I've got all kinds of different yellow showing up, which means that um, there's some link that's broken or conflicting, and it doesn't like that I'm doing two different joints on here. So I'm gonna use a way that's actually kind of considered not as good modeling practice, but Fusion 360 seems to like it better. So I'm gonna hit J for join again, capture position. And instead of doing a cylindrical uh, constraint, we're gonna do a rigid one. So I'm gonna hit rigid, I'm gonna click on that bottom point again, the, the X, which means axis, and then up here, same thing. And then I'm going to, oops, wrong view, there we go. I'm just gonna drag this down until it's the right positioning, which happens to be right there. And um, when I hit animate here, you'll see it's just kind of shaking. That's just showing me that it can't move. So I'm gonna stop that. So it won't move from this position. And this way we've only done it with one of these joints, but it wouldn't be as intelligent and, um, well, it wouldn't be as intelligent. So if you're trying to make a assembly that moves, this just won't work. Another fun fact, if you click on this, it will turn your screw around. So if you ever have one popping backwards, just hit the flip button. All right, so I'm gonna hit okay. And now you can see that one's in place. Again, my I still missed with my hole. Uh, but you can fix that when you actually do your model. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this last one here. Now there's a couple of things you can do with an assembled model that I've never covered before. So first of all, remember these and they overlap? Sometimes this is very obvious, like right now. Sometimes it's not. There is a tool though that'll let us look for that interface, that interference there. If you hit the inspect drop-down menu and then interference, you can choose uh, two or as many different components as you want and hit compute and it'll tell you the volume of the interference but more importantly it'll highlight it in red so that way you can see exactly where there's two parts that are inside each other that shouldn't be. Another thing you can do is start to kind of animate all of this so first of all if we just do it right as it is now you see this little flag here I'm going to right click on that and hit animate joint and it's going to spin all the way around. That's because we haven't told it when to stop spinning, basically. So I'm gonna hit escape. If we go, if we uh, right click on it again, and actually you have to click on the little flag and then right click on it. You can hit edit joint limits. And then you can hit a minimum and a maximum and the rest position. 
So I'm just going to do, I think, negative 10, uh, maybe negative, nine, uh, negative 8. There we go. It's nice. And I'm going to do 8. No, well, let's do 9 there. That's about right. And hit OK. And now when I click on that right click and hit animate joint, it's only going to move that far. So through your realistic range of motion. So to stop this, just right click and hit cancel. Oh, I hope that helps. If anyone out there has any other questions, please feel free to write those down in the comment section below. I'll try to get a video out to you as soon as I can. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see the rest of my videos as they come out, some will be fusion uh, tutorials like this one. I also hope to be doing some more project focused videos. Then please subscribe so you'll see those. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.